Well, good morning again, everybody. This is Lynn Gardner. Welcome to the Team Excellence Call. So good to be with you today. It's a beautiful day in Virginia. You know, we've been uh, really blessed these early summer days, whether, you know, it, the weather's more like spring, really, than early summer. And even though we're getting those late afternoon, uh, you know, thunderstorms like we really do, and I love them, by the way, most of our days so far have been low humidity and cooler temperatures. And boy, oh boy, that makes working on our farm project so much more enjoyable. And you know, as you know, and we were just talking about it, we're transforming a 3,600 square foot horse barn into our meeting place. And don't laugh if you haven't seen it, okay? It's going to be absolutely spectacular. But by doing this, we can assure that our events here at the farm are within budget, no matter how many or how few people attend. And that's, that's the goal. So please pray with us and, and pray for us as we see this project through all of it be giving glory to God. He's a big God and, and, and we all want to serve uh, him and do, by doing this, but also our Enagic community. Now my guess is the barn is probably, I've never measured it, probably a hundred yards from the house. And I've been walking that hundred yards uh, several times a day, every day lately. Yesterday, when I set out to the barn, I saw a baby bird that had fallen from its nest. And it was obvious that it was way too young to be out on its own. It was even more obvious how out of sorts it was, you know, because it, it belonged with its mother in that nest. You know, it was that bird and its need to belong that inspired the message today entitled, Where Do You Belong? You know, we're all born with the need to belong, whether we admit it or not. Some people like to think, oh, they're so low, they're free agent, they don't need anybody else on the planet, you know, but they're just lying to themselves. Everybody has a sense or a need to belong. You know, if you ever interview somebody from one of those horrendous destructive gangs that we read about, right, and you ask them, why are you even in this thing? What you'll hear is missing components to their life and their need to belong. So they're belonging to the wrong thing. We all have a need to feel like we're in the midst of like-minded people. And we all feel the sense of the, of the need to belong. We feel that in relationships. We feel it in our families, in our church body. And believe it or not, especially in our business. Being part of something is one thing. But having a sense of belonging to it is an, uh, another thing altogether. You know, it is possible to be in a relationship, even for decades, without that sense of belonging. You know, some people endure that kind of situation for decades and they will never know what it's like to be a team because they really have no sense of belonging. They have no shared purpose for that bigger picture, right? They're not really coming alongside each other to reach the goal. If you ever want to see a lost person, you know, a person that seemingly lives a life but never thrives. I mean, there's there's air going into those lungs every day, but ain't nothing happening, right? Turn to a single person. I'm not talking about a young single person, but turn to a single person with no children, one that makes absolutely no effort to reach out to a place of belonging for a bigger something bigger than themselves, and you will see one of the most unhappy, unfulfilled human beings that you'll ever set your eyes on. We all need to belong to something. You know, it's possible for us to work like beavers in this business and even, you know, shout the praises of our mission without ever feeling a real sense of belonging, the, one, the kind that it takes to fulfill a dream. You know, my friend and one of our greatest leaders, Anna Gallman, introduced me to a book a few months ago entitled Tribes, by Seth Godin. If you haven't read it, you need to read it. Maybe it's been talked about on this call before, but it's very, very important that you, you know, try to get a sense of the need. You know, this book uh, puts the need of belonging into perspective using that concept of a tribe to drive the message home. A lot of us, when we hear that word tribe, and we think all kinds of weird stuff, right? We conjure up a native people wearing, you know, just a couple of leaves on them, right? And we discount that, uh, the necessity of belonging to a tribe because of what we think of when we think of a tribe. So, but let's look at what a tribe really is. You know, Seth Godin describes it, a tribe like this. A tribe is any group of people, large or small, who are connected to one another, a leader and an idea. You know, for years, humans have joined tribes, whether they're religious, ethnic, political, or even musical because it's our nature. You know, perhaps you see the need or understand the application 
when you think of a religious tribe, you think about, well, I'm in this church body. We're on a like-minded mission. You know, we're around like-minded people or even an ethnic tribe or a political tribe. A lot of people rallied up on their political side. Man, they are with people that are like-minded or they're attacking the ones that are, right? But do you understand the need to belong to a tribe in this world of ours? And it's a magic mission. And chances are you don't. There are components to a tribe that we see every day. For instance, those of you committed to tuning in to these Team Excellent calls day after day, week after week, and year after year, my hat goes off to you. That's a that's a step toward gathering together with your tribe. You know, you're you're on the phone with like-minded people with like-minded goals. Some of you make it a point to participate in local demos and some attend local events and that's another step, of course, to toward being part of that tribe, just by showing up and being around like-minded people with like-minded goals. But to be part of a tribe, one that has the potential to reinforce the mission that you're a part of, what you, know, what you belong to, if you will, to be an active member and one that will grow and give, it takes a gathering together just for the purpose of the tribe itself. It doesn't just happen, right? A tribe will generally begin with a leader. You know, you can't have a tribe without some sort of leader, right? But more importantly, you can't be a leader without a tribe. You know, we often hear that in our world, and I've struggled with this myself, where I'm like, hey, wait a minute, here I am. Where are my people, right? Where's the tribe? Leaders come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and it doesn't take a, a certain rank or any sort of major accomplishments to be a, re a leader. You know, one of the most significant Significant characteristics of a leader is they're willing to step up. You know, so you first you have to understand that everybody needs to belong and that it will be the tribe that reinforces the belief system and propels all members toward great things. And then you have to be willing to step up to make it happen if nobody else is, right? Your tribe won't necessarily be people within your own group. It might be just people within all kinds of different groups. Your tribe will consist of like-minded people on a like-minded mission instead. Your tribe won't be made up of, of just people already succeeding, although you'll see more of those than people that who haven't quite made it yet because the, the successful ones understand the need to belong. In some ways, I think we have a tribe that is, you know, fed through the Living Waters Farm event. You know, we have people who gather together and, you know, for the most part every year, you know, and the event uh, is a gathering of like-minded people on a like-minded mission in more ways than one. We have a lot of people of faith, you know, with appreciation for God and all that he is and all that he does. And, and, and then they're on the same mission as we are with the Enagic business, right? They gather together to reinforce their belief system in every way that matters. And they have a sense of belonging. They don't show up just to be taught by somebody else. If that's what's on your mind that, you know, what's in it for me, you can't grow, right? These people show up to be fed and to contribute instead. You know, they spend their time in a, in a retreat type setting, but when they're, when they leave, they're fired up and driven to succeed and to spread the message to the rest of the world, all because they were united with their tribe of like-minded people on a like-minded mission. Anna Gallman showed me a great picture of what that tribe should look like in business, and I learned so much from her. Before she set the example for me, I was more inclined to think that a tribe for my business would be a gathering of my own team, you know, where I pull your team together and, and, and have meetings, right? And God knows I've done a lot to facilitate that. But the tribe that she launched during her extended stay in Virginia, she actually lives in California, wasn't made up of her team at all. It wasn't even made up of people on the same team for the most part. It was made up of like-minded people on a like-minded mission instead. Each one with a need to feel like they belong to something bigger than themselves. And each one that would confess to you on the phone today that until that tribe came along, even though they tuned in, even though they showed up, they had no sense of belonging. People need to belong. And unless they do, they're going to move on. That's true in relationships. It's true in families. It's true in the church. And it's especially true in our business. And you're seeing it every day. People also need leadership, a, a, a tribe leader in this case, not because they're weak, but because they want to be stronger. If people don't have leadership, they crawl through the desert to find it. They're going to find it somewhere if they're motivated to succeed and they don't have a leader. So if you aren't directing your people to a tribe and or to a leader, if you aren't leading, you might lose them as they lose hope. We can't deny that people need to feel like they belong to something. And again, we see it every single day. 
But for the sake of this call, everybody in your Enagic world needs to feel like they belong. And they will never know what that really feels like unless they engage with and commit to being part of a tribe. Tribes need to get together. You know, even though we're in the age of technology, even though you're on the other side of the phone and I'm on the other side of the country, you know, even though we can get on a Zoom calls and we can see the faces of the people speaking, nothing beats personal interaction. Tribes need to have time and space to build not just business relationships, but personal relationships. It's not just learning about our business that counts. It's gaining that strength and that confidence and building momentum because we belong to, the, you know, to a tribe of like-minded people on a like-minded mission. And the same that is true about that single person I described with no children and no attempt to find like-minded people, people who don't find us in our business will flounder and they'll never be fulfilled. That's exactly what's happening day after day in our world. People are detached. A lot of people are relying on technology and it's great. I use it every day and I succeed in, in, in large part because of it. But you cannot ever build really anything significant without a sense of belonging because people don't have a tribe to belong to. They just have a business to work. And frankly, it'll wear you out unless you're able to find that, that tribe. A tribe needs to have a challenge. You know, it's not just a gathering together for fun. It's, it's trying to challenge one another, kind of push each other outside of your comfort zone. Here's a project. What if we all say we're going to do this? And, and, and before we meet again, you know, we're going to accomplish these goals. They, they hold each other accountable. They don't be each other up. I, I was eyewitness where Anna would have challenged the group to, you know, between this week and the next week when we gather, how about, you know, you think about doing these things. And, and some people showed up empty handed. They weren't called, you know, they were not the teacher, <laughs> spank them for not, you know, doing what they, but, but you can rest assured though she said she didn't say a word about it. They were kicking themselves that they didn't do what the other people did. That's what a tribe does for you. A tribe needs a leader, just like, you know, any other area of life. And again, a leader comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes and they aren't necessarily the accomplished ones yet they're just the willing ones you know you guys have heard my story about stepping out for the first event i i was confessing before the call events the details uh, it's not my thing trust me it is way outside of my gifts and it's outside of my comfort level but when tamia heard me whine about not and having an event she said step up girl and i stepped up and man everybody stepped out you know within this tribe so to speak and they served and they made it happen that's what's happening before our very eyes right now but the point of the of my telling you this again is that I believe with that first event, I think I was a 3A. I wasn't saying, well, well, I'm not at least a 6A, or I'm not at least this, or I'm not, I've never accomplished that, or what, what, why will people want to want to come when, you know, it's this, that, and the other thing. No, 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 she said step up, and it wouldn't matter what my rank was or what my rank wasn't, because I wanted to succeed, and somebody, a tribe leader, if you will, that had already gone before me said, you know what you need to do? You need to step up. So I stepped up. As a reminder, a tribe is any group of people, large or small, who are connected to one another and a leader and an idea. That word connected means joined or linked together. And that joining or linking can't happen just by itself. It really, you know, I feel like reunion week every time I call in on Thursdays, but it's not enough, right? It can't just happen by tuning into a call or by attending an event. The real depth and the fruit of that tribe has to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's the bonding, the forming of a tribe of like-minded people on a like-minded mission where the power and the growth and the fulfillment is found. So do you belong, you, you belong to a magic, so to speak. So you, you have connections and friendships locally and online, no doubt about it, right? But do you have a sense of belonging? Or do you just have contacts or do you have a sense of belonging? You know, when you work a nine to five job, you absolutely belong to a tribe, whether it's the kind of tribe you ultimately want to stick with or not is irrelevant. You're paid to be there. You're paid to do the mission. You're around like-minded people. And that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? You're, you are part of a tribe. You're told when to be there, how to be there, what to think and what to do, and you're compensated for it. But when people end up out on their own, when you make that step from being part of a tribe in a nine to five, and you say, I want to build my own business. Now I tell you something, your sense of belonging can go out the window in a 
quick minute, especially, Ken, when you look at other people and you compare yourselves to them and say, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah, they're already a 6A million and I'm not even a 2A. You, it, as you look out there, if you don't have that sense of belonging, if you're not dedicated to being around like-minded people when a like-minded mission, and I'm talking one-on-one, up close and personal, right? And it doesn't have to be people just on your team. I'm talking about making a commitment to be part of the tribe. If you don't ever do that, you know what? It's so sad to look out at our business and know that we are absolutely in the right place at the right time. And yet every day you see people just kind of dwindling out and, and we're losing them. We're not losing them because the magic failed. We're not losing them because our compensation changed. We're not losing them because nobody's out there to buy what we have. We're not losing them because nobody wants to do what we do. We're losing them because they don't have a sense of belonging. So I encourage you to, to, to look at that for your world and your business. Again, a tribe, a tribe isn't just of you know, people on our team. A tribe isn't just of our best friends that we're already connected to. A tribe is pulling people together regardless of rank, regardless of what team they're on, regardless of you know, what they're doing or not doing, to pull them together, to bond, and to have like, when you have like-minded people on a like-minded mission, amazing things happen. We see it in every area of life. We see it in marriages and they're just shining and it's just so beautiful to see two people walking that same walk you know in unison because they're like-minded on a like-minded mission we see it in our families when everything is in unison and there's a leader in that family and they're leading that tribe and we see it certainly in church over and over but not rest assured we need to be seeing it in this business. So if you want to hold that team together, hold people in and reinforce the amazing mission we're on, you need to consider being part of or starting a tribe. So I hope this guys, this message has resonated with all you guys today. Just think about it, ponder it. Think about every area of your life, everything. You're part of many tribes already, hopefully. <laughs> but just think about being part of a tribe in this business, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with like-minded people on a like-minded mission and I'm there with you. Okay. So you guys uh, go make it a blessed day. I'll see you at the top and I'll see you next week. You take care. Bye-bye.